Okay, California Penal Code. Today we're going over 853.6 and this is a very large uh, penal code and it encompasses a lot of stuff, mostly about warrants, procedures, and notice to appears. Um, it is actually 17 tight pages. So I'm not going to read all 17 of them. I'm just going to highlight the stuff that pertains to us or what we use in our defense. So 853.6. So on the bottom of your tickets, it says 853.9, that it must uh, subscribe to 853.6 as far as the uh, procedures go. So on 853.6, paragraph 4, subparagraph B, unless waived by the person at the time, excuse me, unless waived by the person, the time specified in the notice to appear shall be at least 10 days after arrest if the duplicate notice is to be filed by the officer with the magistrate. That means they got to give you at least 10 days. But it says that it's after the, the notice has been filed by the officer with the magistrate. They never do that. Next we go to uh, paragraph E. The officer shall, as soon as practical, file the duplicate notice as follows. They don't tell you how many on this one, but if you go to 872A and 1382, you have 15 days from commitment 15 days from when they wrote it that they're supposed to have this turned in by the magistrate, to the magistrate. So, under E, the officer shall, as soon as practical, file a duplicate notice as follows. Number one, it shall be filed with the magistrate if the offense charges an infraction. Now we go down paragraph uh, three farther. It says, upon filing of the notice with the magistrate by the officer or the filing of the notice of formal complaint by the prosecutor, the magistrate may fix the amount of bail that in his or her judgment in accordance with section 1275, 1275 is where they have a list of what all the infractions are and how much they're worth. It's kind of like your, uh, your table of contents that says if you have a cell phone ticket, X number of dollars. Okay, so is reasonable and sufficient for the appearance of the defendant and shall endorse upon the notice a statement signed by him or her in the form set forth in section 18, excuse me, 815A, 815A. We're going to do that next because they leapfrog, but they all have to be held. But this again says they were supposed to go before a magistrate. The magistrate the magistrate's supposed to uh, determine the amount of the bail, which is already set on a form, so it's uniform throughout California. And he's supposed to endorse upon the notice a statement signed by him or her as per section 815A. So we'll have to go to that one next. This is something that I just throw in here. Uh, it's farther down on paragraph E, the last one. Upon making of the order that no further proceedings be had, all sums deposited as bail. So they keep calling your fine a bail. Well, a bail is if you show up and if there's no problem, you're supposed to get your bail money back. They always want to keep the, the bail money. So it says that when, when no other further proceedings be had, all sums deposited as bail shall immediately be paid into the county treasury for distribution pursuant to section 1463. This was the crux of why I got into this. How can this be fair when the commissioner, judge, magistrate, judicial officers are all paid by governmental funds that are sponsored by these tickets? Same with the officer. The officer salaries are all paid for by the county also, or the city, and they're getting the revenue from these tickets. And there's no other outside person. It's not like you have someone who's defending you. So that means that any money they make off these tickets is going to actually support them and do their paycheck. So, paragraph H. A peace officer shall use the written notice to appear procedure set forth in this section for any misdemeanor offense in which the officer has arrested a person without a warrant pursuant to section 836 in which he or she has taken custody of a person pursuant to section 847. I will do those later. And now we're on uh, paragraph I uh, at the bottom after 10. The form shall be filed with the arresting agency as soon as practical and shall be made available to the party without having custody of the arrested person subsequent to the arresting officer and to any person authorized by law to release him or her from custody. Okay, here we are again. It says that they have to file this form, which is your notice to appear, as soon as practical. They're not giving you the time frame here, but in the other code sections it says 15 days from commitment. Commitment is when they wrote the ticket. Paragraph J, once the arresting officer has prepared the written notice to appear and has delivered a copy to the person arrested, the officer shall deliver the remaining original and all copies as provided by subdivision E, which I read you earlier. Okay. This is another whole sideline. It says, 
and this is uh, under J. Any person, including the arresting officer and a member of the officer's department or agency or any peace officer who alters, conceals, modifies, nullifies, or destroys, or causes the same, the face side of the remaining original or any copy of the citation that was retained by the officer for any reason before it is filed with the magistrate with a person authorized by the magistrate to receive deposit and bail is guilty of a misdemeanor. So what this says, and you'll see this every once in a while, that a police officer will write, make changes on the ticket before he gives it to the magistrate. So there's times where he's written a ticket, given you a copy, and then he wrote notes or changed it or altered it or something like that before he goes to the magistrate. You know, that person is guilty of a misdemeanor. We've had a lot of tickets dismissed by that. And then the last paragraph I want to read is, if the magistrate makes a finding that there are grounds for dismissal, the finding shall be entered in the record and the charge is dismissed. So like I said, this one section is 17 pages, typed pages. It's a lot. The last paragraph four, if the prosecuting attorney or issuing agency fails to respond to a court referral within 45 days, the court shall make a finding of factual innocence pursuant to section 530.6. So you'll have to watch the videos I say on all those. So that's everything that we have for 853.6, but this governs 853.9 because it references it, and same as 815A, which I'm going to do next. If you want to know what this means, or understand how you're supposed to use it, or how to put it together in a defense or an attack against the prosecution, you got to go to our site, CaliforniaTicketBusters.com, and learn the secrets on how to put this recipe together for a surefire win.